All right, welcome to today's video. And for today's topic, we're gonna to talk about a question that I get asked a lot, and that has to do with the reliability and maintenance costs of the Dodge Vipers. And so I find that I'm uniquely qualified that since I've owned two Vipers over the last nine years and put a combined 60,000 miles on these two cars. So my first Viper that I owned was a 2001 ACR, and it had a little over 60,000 miles on it when I got it. And after I totaled it, it had about 92,000 miles on it. And that one I was using as my daily driver. The second Viper I got, which was this 96 here, I got it had a little over 13,000 miles on it, and now it's sitting at a little over 42,000 miles. So overall, uh, they aren't that bad, especially in the world of exotics and supercars where you hear all these nightmares of like your Ferraris that require timing belt adjustments and that cost thousands and thousands of dollars and out of engine services that cost tens of thousands of dollars. I haven't seen or experienced anything like that with the Vipers. So for the most part, they've just been oil changes and just general maintenance and checking things. So for oil changes, I do most of all of my own work on these cars and oil changes, of course, they're super easy on the Vipers. And they take 10 quarts of mobile one is usually what I use and the you can buy two five quart jugs at Walmart for 25 bucks a piece, plus a Viper filter, it's usually about 15 bucks. So combined, you're looking at about $65 to do an oil change on a Viper. Of course, if you take it to the dealership, they have to have their SRT tech do the oil change, and so they cost a lot more. Um, that being said, it's really not that hard to change the oil on these cars. I mean, it's like any other car, it's got a drain plug and an oil filter. They're really easy to get to, it's not that bad. So the biggest cost on any Viper that I've seen has been tires. And especially on these earlier ones that have the 17 inch wheels, you're really limited on your tire options. And so your tire costs are gonna be probably usually $1,500 to $2,000 depending on the tires for a set. And they're usually only good for about 20,000 miles. Unless you drive really aggressively, then it can be considerably less. Usually you're not gonna get too much more than the 20,000, maybe 24,000 miles out of them, but that's usually about it. And so that adds up in a hurry if you're driving your car a lot, which I've done in the past, uh, not so much lately. Um, but still, the other factor is the tires do age out. So even if you don't put a ton of miles on them, the tires still go bad. When I got my 96 GTS, the tires that were on it only had like a thousand miles on them, but they were also like eight years old. And I got a blowout within three days of buying the car. Um, so you gotta keep in mind on the tires, not only tread depth, but also tread life. So tires are probably gonna be your biggest expense when it comes to regular maintenance on a Dodge Viper. From there, the specifically on the ACR, uh, for the most part, it was a rock solid car. There was hardly any real issues with it. The biggest expense though did happen when I missed a shift and damaged the pinion bearing on it. Um, so of course that wasn't the car's fault, that was my fault. Um, and then while we were in there doing the pinion bearing repair, we also upgraded to a 355 gear set and also decided to go ahead and put a Borla race exhaust system on the same time. So that was my most expensive bill out of all of the maintenance costs that I've had on either Viper. And it was a few thousand dollars to have that work done. Um, that was the one of the few times that I've actually taken the Viper into a shop and having it done just because I didn't want to deal with rebuilding the rear diff on the car. Uh, it's not something I'm really set up for here in the shop. But other than that, the car was really rock solid. Uh, I did have to replace the driver's door uh, wiring harness. Uh, the reason for that is a poor design from the factory and the harness goes and bends basically a full 180 and when you open and close the door and over time the wires wear and break and so i had to replace the driver's harness on that viper and that was only like a couple hundred dollars for a replacement wire harness so again not that big of a deal now if i take it into the dealership that probably would cost several hundred dollars for installation but in the grand scheme of things it's still pretty pretty solid so other than that, the ACR really, I didn't have any issues with over the years of that I owned the car and the miles that I racked up on it. So just regular maintenance and tires whenever I wore them out. Now, the 96 GTS had a few other hiccups along the way with it. Uh, from the beginning, about six months into owning it, the AC compressor seized, and so I had to replace that. Um, if you go to Mopar, it's a 
really expensive part. I think it's like six or seven hundred dollars at the time, um, but it's the same one that you can order off of Rock Auto. It's the same manufacturer, and so it's only a couple hundred dollars to order a replacement one from there. And then a friend of mine and, and I, we went ahead and installed it at his garage. So it wasn't, again, it wasn't that big of a deal to work on it, and it wasn't that expensive of a repair bill. I probably would have been seven, eight hundred dollars, maybe a thousand if we'd taken it to the dealer to have them do it, but still not super horrible. Also, I had a fan relay fail on the Viper. Uh, if you've seen my video about how the Viper is cursed, I'll put a link to the description below to that video. Um, you'll see the problems I had taking it to Vegas. Uh, the main problem I had was a fan relay fail, and uh, of course it's a 20 plus year old uh, relay, so they're bound to go out. It was like a $20 part, so fix that. Um, but of course that led to some other issues down the road, causing me to have to have the radiator record, which was like $700. And then the radiator hoses I went ahead and replaced because they're aging. And new radiator hoses for that were silicone from Mishimoto, they were about $250, I think, for those. So overall, though, some of those expenses have been a little higher than your regular like Honda Civic or Neon. Uh, but compared to most cars in that performance category, the prices of maintenance and hasn't been that high. And the reliability, I mean, they've been rock solid cars. I mean, I've driven both Vipers hundreds of miles in a single stint, taken them on multiple road trips, and they haven't really left me stranded or cost me a ton of money to own. So anybody out there who's thinking about the Dodge Viper but is on the fence because they're concerned about reliability issues or maintenance costs, let me set you mind at ease on that one. Don't worry about it. There are great rock solid American car that's got really robust components and work really well and hold up over time. So that's today's video. I hope you found this topic useful. And as always, uh, if you wanna see more of my videos, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell. And if you like the topic of today's video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, hit that like button, and I will see you the next video.